Our headline story today. Old Trafford, home of Manchester United for over a hundred years. But what if tomorrow it wasn't? Imagine waking up to find the theatre of dreams renamed the Ineos Bowl, the Snapdragon Stadium, or even the OnlyFans Arena. Impossible? Think again. Because right now, Manchester United is facing a decision that could change the history of the Red Devils forever. In this video, we'll uncover why Manchester United are considering cashing in at the expense of the club's history, the shocking truth about stadium naming rights in the Premier League and why it's not as easy as you might think. We'll also see which club legend said they'll quit football forever over this issue. And just how much could United rake in based on recent deals? I am flabbergasted. For over a century, stadium names have been sacred ground in football. They're more than just buildings, they're cathedrals of the beautiful game, steeped in history and emotion. Sir Jim Ratcliffe, minority owner of Manchester United, himself said on the possible selling of naming rights a year ago, that would be heresy. I would not change it. It's always Old Trafford. Heresy? Yep, in today's commercialized football landscape, even sacred ground isn't safe from corporate rebranding. Despite his previous stance, reports now suggest the club is considering selling the naming rights to Old Trafford, their iconic home for over a hundred years. So, why the sudden change of heart? United are committing to a major redevelopment of the Theatre of Dreams, with the Glazers long criticised for neglecting the club's infrastructure. While plans are still up in the air, options include revamping the existing stadium or building a new one nearby, one thing's for certain, it won't come cheap. The Telegraph reported expanding the current ground could cost 800 million, while a new stadium could set them back up to 2 billion. That's billion with a B. This is frightening. Oh my gosh, what is that? To fund this mammoth project, The Athletic reports that Sir Ratcliffe seeks to drive up revenues, and selling stadium naming rights is one way to do just that. This potential move has ignited a fierce debate pitting financial pragmatism against fan sentiment in a way that encapsulates broader tensions in modern football. On one side, there's cold, hard business logic. Manchester United, despite its global brand, is facing mounting financial pressures. As we'll explore in our deep dive into the Red Devils' finances, out this Tuesday, the club is saddled with over 650 million in debt and has posted operating losses for the last three years. Selling Old Trafford's naming rights is an untapped gold mine, pure profit waiting to be unearthed. On the other side, we have the fans and their deep emotional connection to Old Trafford. The Manchester United Supporters Trust is demanding extensive fan consultation before any decisions are made. Their statement is reported by The Telegraph. Fans need to be at the heart of these decisions and we expect the club to start consultation before decisions are made. Their stance echoes a wider sentiment among supporters that some things should be beyond commercialization. But how many teams have already cashed in on their biggest physical asset? Believe it or not, in a world where everything in football seems up for sale, stadium names have remained a rare holdout. Of the 20 teams competing in the upcoming Premier League season, just six have sold their naming rights. Manchester City, Arsenal, Leicester, Brighton and Hove Albion, Brentford and Bournemouth. Newcastle United tried it once, rebranding to the sports director under Mike Ashley to lure in prospective buyers. Even when payday loan firm Wonga bought the rights, fan backlash forced a quick retreat to good old St James's Park. Interestingly, newer stadiums like the Amex and GTEC seem to face less resistance to corporate names. It's the historic grounds that sparked the real controversy. So how much will fan sentiment weigh on Manchester United's decision? Even club legends are split on the issue. Eric Cantona, speaking to The Athletic in 2022, was fiercely opposed. Can you imagine Old Trafford becoming a new stadium named after a brand? If they do that, I am sorry, but I am not a fan of United anymore, and I quit football forever. Gary Neville, on the other hand, sees potential benefits. Back in 2019, he commented, I would sell the naming rights to Old Trafford for 60, 70, 80 million a year. On the understanding that all of the money generated, 800 million over 10 years, would mean that the whole of the Stretford end would be 10 or 12 pounds to get in, and a proportion of those tickets would go to young people. 
but how much could United actually pocket by cashing in on the Old Trafford name? Man City's deal with Etihad, covering both shirt and stadium rights, reportedly brings in 70 million a year, with 20 million for the stadium alone. Arsenal's similar arrangement for shirt and stadium with Emirates is worth about 50 million annually. Barcelona's partnership with Spotify, including rebranding their iconic stadium to the Spotify Camp Nou, is reported to net them around 60 million a year. United themselves recently inked the 60 million a year shirt sponsorship with Qualcomm. Based on these figures, stadium rights alone could certainly pull in tens of millions a year, but it would take a record-shattering deal to hit Neville's 60 to 80 million target. However, selling naming rights isn't always an open goal. Tottenham's new stadium has stood without naming rights for five years. Everton, building their new ground, are also without a naming partner. Even the mighty Real Madrid have struck out repeatedly in their attempts. So will we see the Ineos Arena anytime soon? Only time will tell. But one thing's for certain, the battle for Old Trafford is just beginning.